World champion Magnus Carlsen is absolutely annihilating people right now with his Catalan opening. So the other day it was Anish Giri, today it was Richard Rapport. Let's check out what happened in round six of the Tartar Steel. So Magnus with white here, and we saw these standard opening moves. And it really reminds me actually of after the 2018 World Championship, which he played with Caruana. And after that one, he was smashing everyone up with the Sveshnikov using that opening prep. So it's a similar thing here where he's using all this deep preparation he's done and people can't cope right now. So we had these standard opening moves, Knight C6 here, Castles, and now there are options for Black. A6 is a common move, but Rapport goes Rook to B8 here. You're coming off this long diagonal. You're preparing Pawn to B5. And now this is where Magnus plays a really interesting move. Very, very rare, hardly ever seen in the database. Bishop to E3. It looks so weird to put the bishop there because so often a knight comes to D5 and then you're instantly hitting this bishop, threatening to win the pair and ruin the pawn structure. You also block the E pawn. So, you know, what's going on with this? Knight d5 wasn't played. I don't know if Magnus would have played bishop to g5 here after bishop e7. Is he looking to swap these bishops? Does that help him? I don't know. Or would he have played bishop to d2 here after knight d5 and claim the t4 is now coming with the tempo? I'm not sure, but we didn't see this on the board. Instead, Rapport goes for bishop d6. And this rook b8, bishop d6 setup, it reminds me of how he set up against Jan Shishtof Duda in round one, actually. I'll link that game on screen now if you want to check it out afterwards. That was a London, so a very different opening, but similar setup for black. So bishop d6, and now queen c1 from Magnus. Deep stuff here. So he's eyeing this pawn, threatening to win it back, delaying the development of the knight, as we note. Pawn to b5 comes, holding that pawn. And now pawn to b3 from Magnus. So a really nice idea, just undermining these pawns. If you take here as black, then after the recaptures, white gets huge play down the a and the c file here. You might have bishop to b7 to hold that knight. And then we can see all the play that white is getting in compensation. So instead of this, instead of taking that pawn, black actually played bishop b7 immediately. Letting Magnus take here, the pawn recaptured, and now you could consider knight d2 or knight a3, themes of the Giri game, but Magnus actually recaptured with the queen immediately, and here we had knight to b4 from Rapport. So it's a nice move, you open up the eyes of the bishop, you also reroute this knight potentially into d5, and there is actually a very concrete threat now to play bishop to a6, supported by that knight where you're then threatening to take this e2 pawn and there's no queen c2 because the knight covers that square. So white has to react to this and Magnus plays pawn to a3. Now you can't go bishop a6 anymore or after queen to c1, the knight has to move away, let's say to d5 and now you go check and you're winning this bishop on a6 here. So this is no good. So this is why after pawn to a3, we had the knight jumping into d5 here, and Magnus now put this bishop on g5. We had castles, knight b to d2, pawn to h6, Magnus gives up the bishop pair, the knight recaptures, and now the rook came to c1. So a fairly forcing-ish sequence of moves. Black has the bishop pair, but white has all the pressure here as we can see. And somehow white wants to, uh, black rather, wants to liberate the position by pushing to c5 if possible. It helps undermine this pawn in the center which is cramping, starts to open the position for the bishops and also gets rid of this long-term liability. So that's why knight d7 comes now supporting c5 and not say knight d5 which is running straight into things like e4. So knight d7 and queen to a4 from Magnus, good move. So he's looking at this pawn, which is actually undefended, and here Rapport actually plays for peace activity. So he could defend the pawn with pawn to a6, but now rook a to b1 comes, and there's just some uncomfortable pressure down these files here, as we can see. He didn't want to defend passively, so instead he goes for this c5 break, trying to liberate, but Magnus takes up the fight here and takes the pawn on a7.
Now you can't go rook a8 immediately or you're dropping the bishop here. So black has to play differently and probably best was actually bishop to d5. And it might look like you're running into pawn to e4 here, but then rook a8 comes, trapping the white queen. So you have to be a bit careful as white here in these kind of lines. But okay, we didn't have this on the board. The bishop didn't come to d5. Instead, rapport took on f3, just eliminating that knight, which is defending d4. And Magnus recaptured with the bishop here. So the reason he does this is that he wants to maintain this long diagonal down towards the a8 square because he has a very simple long-term plan now, which is to run the a pawn all the way down the board. This pawn is now super dangerous after the queen captured here. But in compensation for playing like this, black gets to take in the centre now, which rapport does. And now we had rook to a2 from Magnus. To talk you through why he played this move, if we just run it back, if Magnus takes this pawn immediately in the centre, now bishop e5 comes, skewering these pieces to one another. So that's why Magnus doesn't take there immediately. He goes rook to a2. And now we had queen to e7, attacking this pawn here. And that's why Magnus doesn't take the pawn now, because then you lose this one here, and this isn't what you want. You want to keep that outside passer. So instead of this, Magnus goes pawn to a4, and now the pawn legitimately is on prees. And I would argue that the best move here for rapport was pawn to e5, holding that central pawn, and at least trying to get some play going through the centre, keep the material level. But you can see stylistically that rapport isn't afraid to kind of chuck a pawn if it gives him peace activity. He's very, very keen on playing actively, like we saw with the knight d7, c5 plan, giving the a7 pawn. So instead he goes rook f to d8. He gives this pawn, but he's trying to activate all the pieces, use the d-file, get some crazy stuff going with these minor pieces against the queen. And he does it here by playing rook to b4. But just hopping back, I think knight to e5 was better here. Now you can't retreat the bishop back to g2, or bishop a3 comes. You're hitting the queen, you're hitting the rook, no good for white. So after knight e5, you'd have to go queen e3 to hold that bishop. And now at least black picks up that dangerous bishop, which was looking down here. And it feels like there's slightly more for black to play for in this position. But okay, this wasn't played. Instead, we had rook b4, but queen c3 from Magnus just steps away from the attack. And knight to b6 from rapport looks really weird because you run straight into a5. But what we'll see now is that Rapport is trying to play the position very tactically. So he goes queen to a7 here. So this pawn is now pinned. If you take the knight, then you lose the rook here. Now this is still actually quite good for white after b7. But regardless of that, there's no need for Magnus to cash in in this way because he's got a superior position anyway. Don't rush it. So he simply plays queen to e3, a really powerful move pinning this knight to the queen as we note and it's just impossible now for this knight to ever move away to any square because then the queen will be taken and if it comes to c8 by the way then you can chop with the rook like this and you're taken with check and your own queen is defended it's no good for black so after queen e3 we had bishop to e7 and the reason rapport tucks this one back here is that white also had some threats there of playing rook to c6 or knight into c4 even, lots of problems with these pieces. All of black's pieces are a bit all over the place now, and Magnus just plays really simply with rook c to c2, defending this one. Now there is a threat to take here. So bishop g5 was played, counter-attacking against the white queen, but simply queen c5 comes. And there's just nothing for black here. I mean, say you take here, for example, you can actually just trade down all the pieces on d2 like this. You could have rook b1, king g2, but there's nothing. This knight is still pinned here. It's no good. You're losing a piece. So coming back to this position here after, whoops, to this position here, instead of taking on d2, rapport goes bishop to e7, counter-attacking the white queen, but a really simple way for Magnus to finish the game now. Pawn takes on b6, so he's a whole piece ahead. If you take the queen here, then we just take here, we're a piece ahead, plus the pawn is going through or you're losing another piece. And if you play as we saw in the game, 
which is queen takes on a2 here, then Magnus is simply able to take this bishop on e7. Rapport took the rook on c2, Magnus took here with check, king h7, and pawn to b7 was the final move of the game. This pawn's unstoppable, the position is dead. If you enjoyed this game, then do click here to subscribe to the channel and see another amazing Tartar Steel game, click here. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.